I'm in Venezuela. In a cave that I'm sharing with tens of thousands of bats. I'm on the trail of Scolopendra gigantea, a huge, venomous centipede. According to legend, these meat eaters can snatch bats right out of the air. And I've come to Venezuela to see if these rumors are true. I'm Dominic Monaghan. All my life I've been driven by two strong passions, acting and wild creatures. Since I was a kid, I've dreamt of traveling the planet to get my hands on the rarest, scary, and most dangerous animals out there. And now, I finally have my chance. I'm in Caracas, capital city of Venezuela. And it's the central hub. Feels like everyone passes through here. That's Jack. And there's an expert in the animal that I'm looking for. And the animal that I'm looking for is called Scolopendra gigantea, the largest centipede in the world. Check it out. Armed with giant claws that deliver flesh-melting venom, these fast-moving predators will take on almost anything. Bang! If it tags you, you're going to be in a lot of pain. They're one of the few invertebrates on the planet that is known to target mammals. And they're such aggressive hunters that it's rumored they can actually pluck bats out of midair. And I've come to Venezuela to see if these rumors are true. With no further ado, we should get on the road, Jack. All right, man. Jungle, here we come. Close to that bus. Hello. <laughs> Welcome to Caracas, man. Finding the cave with a scolopendra isn't going to be easy, but perhaps my greatest challenge will be just getting out of Caracas. Meep, meep, meep. Gangster driving. Hey, what's this up here? These are mimes put here by the city. Yeah. And they are performing uh, in this way that encourages people to be better drivers. They're like traffic cops. Yeah, they are like yes, yes. very nice traffic cops. The mines, yes. Uh, See, they're pulling us, telling us. That's to yes. Go. Nice it's an interesting experiment, but something tells me that in my hometown of Manchester, they might get a slightly different reception. This is some pretty wild traffic, and there's a lot of motorcyclists as well, which is interesting. Yes, yeah, you know, bikers here in Venezuela are wild. Did you see Mad Max? Yeah, I saw Yeah, that. they are like that. They are like the owners of the road. I love it. Gangster driving. My mission will take me in search of a massive cave rumored to house giant flesh-eating scolopendra. According to legend, it can be found 500 kilometers northwest of Caracas on the rugged and remote Peninsula de Paraguana. We are heading down to an area called Cordillera de la Costa. Is that good, Jack? Yes, totally. Perfect pronunciation. Where Jack, our resident insect expert, tells me that there is a really good chance for us to find Scolopendra in the wild. We're heading there to observe this giant centipede in the open before I tangle with one underground. According to Jack, I've got good reason to be cautious. One of the worst bites I've ever had was the one from a skull pender. And it sank these two modified limbs called forcipula into my right thumb and delivered venom. And it happens that the venom of the skull penders melts down your tissue. It feels like your hand is being hammered continuously and also burned with a lighter. So it's not good at all. But don't worry, you know, I've been bit by a lot of species. Lizards, crocodiles, spiders. If someone's gonna get bit, that'll be me. You're gonna be fine. All right, cool. Well, hopefully no one will get bit. Hopefully. Whew, it's hot. 
Jack's just gone inside to pick up a few supplies. We're actually not that far from Caracas. But look at this view. Any opportunity I get to find myself in the jungle, I'm gonna take. And even though we're only just off the beaten path, I'm gonna have a look around while we're on this little rest stop. It's a good idea when you're walking past things that you brush up against to be careful that you don't pick up anything on your way because there's a lot of stuff that can bite and sting you in the jungle. In Spanish, this little guy right here is known as the 24, which means 24 and because the pain administered from its sting supposedly lasts 24 hours a day. Okay, Sam, it's right there. Yeah, this is a false chameleon. These guys are masters of disguise. So he's just gonna sit there and pretend to be the branch until I come right up close to him. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, buddy. Hi. Hi. Isn't that handsome lizard? They can actually change color. Right now, he's got these really beautiful green stripes. As chameleons have these kind of buggy eyes that stick out the side of their head. These guys' eyes are not quite as well refined as a chameleon's, but there is a subtle ability to move their eyes independent of each other. That's very, very important and helpful when they're trying to catch tiny, fast-moving insects. I kept lizards when I was a kid. My brother and I were both kind of allergic to fur, but we loved animals. So the only things that we could keep were reptiles. For that reason, I have a real affection for lizards. They kind of turn me on to wildlife. And with that in mind, I'm gonna put this little guy back on his tree. Thanks, man. It's nice to meet you. The false chameleon. On the road, our journey to reach the cloud forest continues, but on the outskirts of a small town, we hit an unexpected obstacle. What's this? It's a checkpoint. Checkpoint? Yeah, for security. They'll ask for papers, check our identities and stuff. There are some stories about fake checkpoints. You know, some bad guys disguised as a police officer. Making things worse, Jack's never seen a checkpoint here, and he's been driving this road for years. Okay. Okay. We're all good. <laughs> no smiles from him, huh? So when it's, when it's people posing as police officers, they'll pull you over, say that they're cops, take your ID, steal your car, steal your money. And yourself. Wow. Well, I'm glad those guys were the real deal. Yep. With the checkpoint behind us, it's time to start thinking of the challenges we'll face hunting down giant centipedes. And judging from Jack's hand, I've got more to worry about than just kidnappers. What happened? I got bitten by a venomous snake uh, about four years ago. What uh, type? Uh, it's called a fer de lance. The fer de lance is one of the most feared snakes on the planet. These deadly predators kill with giant fangs and highly lethal venom. I almost died. I was able to save my life, but not my finger. The tissue died, so they had to remove the whole, the whole thing. And they live in this part of the world, right? They live in Venezuela? Yes, and there are plenty of them in these regions we're heading to. But upon reaching the base of the cloud forest, it seems like snakes are the least of our worries. Here you go. 
That's it. So we are in a four-wheel drive car, an off-road vehicle, but this is like off, off, off-road. And as you can see, we're struggling a little bit right now. I'm not sure if we're going to make it since Jack is now backing up. You want me to try and push? OK. Right. It's always fun trying to push a one-ton vehicle on your own. OK. Like I'm helping. Oh, no, no. Doesn't look too good, huh? Nope, not at all. Not at all. With our 4 by 4 out of commission, we have no choice but to call in the heavy artillery. <laughs> So we ended up getting bailed out by a tour operator who owns this tank. I like it this way. I, I like better. it. I don't have to drive. It's not my car. I don't care. <laughs> After a wild ride up the mountain, we reached the cloud forest. But as fun as the trip was, we're now hours behind schedule. You gonna leave our stuff here? Yeah, let's lift this here and let's explore a little bit. If we split up, we can cover uh, more terrain. This seems like a great place for standing up our search for scallop enders. OK, because uh, we can guide ourselves by using the river, and we have a lot of rocks and fallen trunks, so scallopenders will be hiding underneath these objects. So uh, remember, scallopenders are aggressive, and also remember that this river is inhabited by uh, venomous snakes. They are quite aggressive and difficult to spot. If you step on one of those animals, you're going to get bit. Remember my finger? Yeah. OK, so be very careful when you step on, and uh, take care, OK? Why don't you go this way, and I'll go this way. OK, bye-bye. See you. Happy hunting. A little scary, to be honest. Looking under rocks and searching under trees for things. When I know that the Third Alliance Viper lives here. But unfortunately, this is the only way I'm going to find an animal I've traveled thousands of kilometers to see. And how bad can flesh melting venom really be? Leaves here. Oh. Now, this isn't a scallopendra, but this is a absolutely ginormous grub of a beetle. And they spend the majority of their life as a larva. Then they'll go through a complete metamorphosis, turn from this to an armor-plated, ginormous beetle. A beetle that's capable of protecting itself. Well, it's nice to meet you. Good luck in your slightly awkward teenage phase, and I'll put you back where I found you. Hours later, still no sign of our quarry, but I've stumbled on something else, an animal I've waited my entire life to see in the wild. one of my favorite animals. It looks like a three-toed sloth. One of the more relaxed animals in the rainforest. I'm gonna guess it's a female. And also, the males have dark patch on their back. Oh, so cute. They're such beautiful animals. Sloths are renowned for being one of the slowest Animals, one of the slowest mammals in the world. They're known to spend up to 23 hours a day sleeping. And the other hour they spend kind of grooming, eating cecropia leaves, just walking around. But they're extremely slow. So slow, in fact, that on a sloth's fur, they have found lichen, moss, and a certain type of moth, which is why they spend a lot of their time in the day scratching, 
itching, trying to get rid of these moths. The sloth comes down from a tree only about once a week, and they do this to defecate. No one really knows why. Well, they might just be polite. Nobody wants to be pooped on from a great height. She looks like she's wearing sunglasses. She looks like she's in a 1980s pop video. Having failed to find anything near the river, we've decided to implement Plan B. It's time to get our hands dirty and build a scolopendra trap. <laughs> it's always a good idea to stick your tongue out when you're digging. It helps you work harder. If we're gonna hope to catch a scolopendra, it's gonna need to be a deep enough hole that it can't just climb out. That's all she wrote. That is gonna be perfect. Jack, what do you think? That's great. Cool, man. So are we done? Not yet. We need another hole right here. smell in the air. It's almost as if you're in a humidifier now. That is stunning. <coughs> so, we probably got another half hour's work to go, Jack, huh? Kind of. And, uh, but... I feel like we're losing light at this point. Yeah. Yeah, we should get moving, huh? More snakes at night time? The dangerous ones. Excellent. So it's getting much, much darker by the second. Still got about 10 or 15 minutes left to go. And my concern now is that we're going to be walking back to the car in almost pitch dark. And everything that can bite, sting, and attack you is much more active once the lights go down. Jack, how you doing? I have this one finished. OK, me too. So we just have to put the... The wall here. And the theory of the pitfall trap works just like this. Now let's say I'm an insect walking through the forest and I'm heading in this direction. I'm gonna hit this plank. The plank is actually gonna usher me into this little hole right here. And if I get by this hole, I'm gonna keep walking and fall into this second one. And if I get by the second one, I'm gonna hit the third one. And you know what? If I get by the third one, I'm a super smart insect and I don't deserve to get caught. We're finally done, but it's taken so long, we have to make the arduous slog back to our car in the dark. At least most of it's downhill. It is absolutely pitch black in the cloud forest. I can't see my hand in front of my face unless I'm shining my head torch at it. We are about an hour's walk from the car, and the cloud forest takes on a completely different personality. When it's dark, very foreboding, and all the nocturnal animals are out looking for their dinner. And so ends an absolutely fantastic first day in Venezuela. It's now the following morning. We're heading to see if we've caught anything in our pitfall traps. Oh, it's like Christmas morning. See what you got in your stocking. Let's see if any of these worked. I'm nothing in number one. Oh. Whoa. We have Scalapendra. Look, look at the size of that thing. Scalapendra Gigantia. Holy smokes. Wow. That is ginormous. Yes. So you want to take it up? Yeah. Just remember that you're very aggressive. OK. That was a bite. Did you see that? Yeah, that was a warning. Yeah. Wow, that was powerful. I could feel that shaking. 
my hand a little bit when it whipped around with its mouth and its tail at the same time. Come on, find that. Yeah. All right, back off. There Frank. you have it. Back up, Frank. Here it comes. That is an absolutely ginormous centipede. It's just trying to work out what just changed. So you don't think there's any circumstances in which you can hold an animal like this? Not at all. If this thing gets closer and closer to me and starts to pick up on the fact that there is a human being breathing all over it, it's going to change its speed and it's going to go into full-on attack mode. It's an incredibly impressive animal. It's like holding a loaded gun. Yes. At some point, it's going to explode. Yes, yeah, very sensitive. So when it feels a threat, it will attack. And this movement right here, this kind of cobra movement, is scary, to say the least. I'm trying to work out which direction this scalopender is going to go. Wow. There's no anti-venom. Not as far as I know, there's no anti-venom. These things are built, evolved to kill. They're an out-and-out -out carnivore. All they do is kill other animals. It has an armor-plated exoskeleton, which is basically its bones on the outside of its skin. Legs that end in points, and those points grab hold of their prey and keep them tight. And then modified legs at the front of its mouth, which administer an extremely toxic venom. And as you can tell by the sound of my voice, it's an incredibly intimidating animal. They get your heart rate going, no question. Yes. You know, this animal hasn't changed for more than 300 millions of years. So there are fossil records of them long before the dinosaurs were here. I've never seen a bigger scolopendra. And it's just an incredible experience to be this close to something this large and potentially this dangerous. Having finally gotten a taste of just what I'm up against, it's time to go in search of even bigger scolopendras, rumored to prey on bats. Legend states they live in a large cave on the Peninsula de Paraguana, almost 2,400 square kilometers of remote and rugged wilderness. Jack has to be back in Caracas later today. So I'm going to have to find these caves on my own. Thanks for all your help. Bye-bye. Take care of yourself. So while I wait for a bus that will take me north, I find some common ground with the locals. The great thing about football is it speaks a universal language. It's a very, very simple game. I don't speak Spanish very well. I don't think these guys speak English very well. But we both know how to play this game in a way that kind of meshes together. And this is exactly what I used to do when I was at school. 11, 12, 13 years old. We'd wait for a bus, kick the ball around for half an hour. Do you want to play? Like a little mini Maradona. Everybody loves football. See? Is this the bus? Adios way of getting around the country. When I heard the word boss, you know, I was expecting a boss. This is more of a modified truck. I'm not really sure why I'm drawn to this cave. From an outside observer's point of view, everything about it is just a nightmare. It's going to be hot. We're going to need to wear protective clothing and breathing apparatus because the air inside it is toxic. And scallop hendras, twice the size 
of what I've seen. Oh, you guys going? Hola. It's for you. Gracias. Adios. Sweet man. I'm on my way to the village of Koro to meet the man who will guide me to the cave. Jack's told me he works at a mobile zoo that houses his collection of snakes. Just got dropped off at the entranceway to the sand dunes here. And I'm guessing this is the snake bus, since there are graphic images of venomous snakes. I'm looking for a gentleman called Jose. Como está? Jose. Jose Luis. Jose Luis has spent a lifetime studying wildlife on the peninsula. And if anyone can get me to the cave of the Scolopendra, it's him. Wow, this is amazing, man. And you have some really, really interesting snakes here. It's not the kind of normal snakes that you would see in captivity. These guys are called royal pythons in England. And in America, they're called bull pythons. When they feel threatened, they roll up into a bull. It's a defense mechanism. They just like hanging out. Well, that's a big snake. Esta serpiente es una serpiente no venenosa. It's got a real kind of cobra-like attitude and smart. <laughs> After being introduced to some less lethal snakes, I come face to face with one of the region's most dangerous inhabitants. The neotropical rattlesnake. Es una de las serpientes venenosas que tenemos con venenos neurotóxicos, eh, miotóxicos, cardiotóxicos. This curved kind of S shape that they're in, that's when they're ready to strike. If I were to get close enough to this snake and there's no glass in the way, this thing's gonna attack. And it's in a position where it can attack with the most amount of force and deliver the most amount of venom. Tomorrow, my quest to find the Scolopendra will take me deep into rattlesnake territory. And where we're headed, far from any hospital, there won't be any glass separating me from these deadly predators. Earlier on, I was in the cloud forest, and the forest was dense. It was 15, maybe even 20 degrees cooler, and uh, filled with trees and rocks and rubble and things like that. Right now, we're in what feels like a desert. There's cacti everywhere, there's sand dunes everywhere, and it's much, much hotter. A perfect place for reptiles to hang out, which I'm sure is the reason why our friend Jose spends most of his time here. The rumors that I've heard about this centipede is that it's so large and so strong that it can actually catch bats out of midair. I'm really hoping I can see this. So we're finally here. This is as close as we can get to in a car to the caves. And hopefully waiting for us is a whole bunch of Scolopendra gigantea. So we're just loading up the last amount of essential kit that we're going to need. Damn, for your protection. Protection from, from snakes? Yes. OK. But he's not wearing any. It's a little disconcerting. I guess it's always a good idea to listen to the professional. And we'll worry about the fashion decision later. Anti-venom. Anti-venom. For rattlesnake? Yes. So we've got one, two, three, four, five vials of anti-venom. OK? Keep that close by. So Jose said it's about three or four kilometers down this rugged trail to the entrance of the cave. That's about three or four kilometers in thick rattlesnake country. Oh, check this out. Look at this right here. There is a tiny little tarantula. Oh, wow, he's like bright blue. Never seen a tarantula this color. In the sunlight, it's kind of neon blue. 
with an almost kind of cartoon orange abdomen. Let me see if I can get hold of this guy. Just bring it out to show you. Oh, this thing is fast. Super duper fast. Whoa. This thing is really, really nippy. Oh, dudes. Let me see if I can wrangle him out. This guy's a little skittish. I asked a friend who was bitten by a tarantula what it felt like, and she said it was similar to being bitten by a rat. They can easily reach the bone with their bite. They respond mainly to vibration. If the prey animal comes close enough to the tarantula, it'll feel the vibration on the floor. They'll run towards the animal, grab it, smash these massive mandibles down into the prey's body, and then it'll envenomate the body. And the prey animal's body will actually start to liquefy. I think if I continue to mess around with this guy, he would eventually probably have a go at me. I'm just gonna let him do his thing. I'm in this little bromeliad. Nice. Vulture. Hopefully that's not an omen. Scavenger of death. And everywhere around me, looks like it's trying to hurt me. The side of these ginormous cacti, all these thorny bushes. My arms are ripped to shreds. It's like the closer and closer I get to the cave, nature is saying, keep away. It's extremely foreboding. According to Jose Luis, this overgrown stretch of trail is the most dangerous part of the entire hike, and it doesn't take me long to find out why. Stop. Snake, 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 snake. It's a rattlesnake. This looks like to be the neotropical rattlesnake, sometimes known as the tropical or South American rattlesnake. At any moment, this snake could wheel around and attack me within a fraction of a second. They can strike about a third of the distance of their body, which is about a foot and a half away. Now, this rattlesnake can easily kill me. Like all rattlesnakes, it has these really, really defined holes at the front of its face, which it uses as a heat-seeking device for its prey. Absolutely incredible to have an experience like this, with a wild snake. And I'm just gonna let her pass through my hands. I'm just gonna let Jose see if he can wrangle it back into the open. This is one of the last rattlesnakes that you want to get bitten by. But they do make me very, very nervous. They have a very strong venom causes absolutely awful symptoms in human beings. Oh, wow. Those things are ginormous. It's actually dripping a little venom. They're like two little hypodermic needles. And the venom sacs that sit right here get squeezed when the fangs come up and when they jam into the prey. The venom flies down these hollow teeth and into the prey, envenomating it, and very, very quickly killing it. These guys are expert predators and ultimate killing machines. Bueno, should we say adios? The neo-tropical rattlesnake. Very, very cool. Back on the trail, we get our first clue that we're getting closer to the cave. No. Solora ammoniaco, producto de la descomposición 
de las eh, guanos, de los murciélagos. Estamos cerca de la cueva. Mm -hmm. Vamos a llegar a la cueva. So it smells like ham and eggs. Whew. I've never had ham and eggs that smells like that. Esta es la cueva del guano. La cueva que estaba buscando encontrar la escolopendra gigante. Gracias, José. Okay. Muchas gracias. Wow. Okay. So, have a little closer look down here. We're here. We're here at the Cuevo del Guano, a bat poo cave, which is aptly named since all I can see with the naked eye is bat poo. I was kind of expecting this, you know, pathway to a dome and then you walk in, but it looks like I'm gonna have to abseil down onto the cave floor. Gracias. So, Jose got me this far to the entrance of the cave, but he's just told me that if I intend on going any further, which I do, I'm on my own. And I'm now just kitting myself up with what I'm gonna need to head into the cave. This protective gear is actually gonna form a barrier between me and what is, at some point, knee-deep bat guano. So we have down there lots of different types of snakes, including venomous rattlesnakes and venomous coral snakes. Tarantulas, arguably the most amount of cockroaches on the planet. Three or four different types of bat. Oh, and the giant scolopendra, the largest centipede in the world, which is the reason why I'm going into this cave of death. Jose, hasta luego. Hasta luego, éxito. Gracias. I'm definitely going to need my respirator. Even the air down here is dangerous. Piles of dried guano or bat excrement contain a toxic fungus that can be fatal if inhaled. I am your father. Anytime you wear this type of equipment, it makes you feel like you're on another planet. Man, this cave is so cool. Guano on the cave floor should mean there are bats up above. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of bats above my head. So many of them are actually causing a breeze just shows how many bats are in here and have been in here for so many years to have that amount of guano. Everything about this cave says get out. A lot of the animals in here could do you harm. This cave is crawling with life, but I'm not sure what's venomous and what isn't. I have to be careful when I walk not to step on spiders. There are so many of them here. I'm really surprised at the abundance of life in this cave. Nature always finds a way. This little garden here of sprouts grows because they're catching a little bit of sunlight. Scalopendras really don't like light. So if there are any scalopendras here, and I'm sure there are, 
They'll be very, very shy. Wow, that's a gorgeous spider. the giant scolopendra is coming down to the wire. And with just 24 hours to go before I have to fly home, if I don't find it tomorrow, I've come all this way for nothing. As my last day in Venezuela begins, Jose Luis and I are heading to one last cave that, fingers crossed, may be home to the scolopendra. Luckily, we won't be needing climbing gear or breathing kits, but we're still gonna have to be very careful. This right here is a tailless whip scorpion. These guys are perfectly suited to this environment, caves. Their eyesight isn't very good. They respond mainly to vibration with these extremely long, modified legs that they have. So this little animal will sit on the cave wall, stick its legs out, gently kind of feeling around when something comes along. They'll rush out, grab it, kind of spear it, similar to a praying mantis, eat it, and then go back and hide. They like crevices. They like it to be kind of cool, damp, and dark. And even though they look kind of fearsome, they're actually harmless to humans when they need to. They can move really, really fast. Murcielagos. Yeah. Dom. Yeah. Oh, cool. These are house centipedes. So we're on the right track. You usually find these things in your cellar or in your attic, somewhere kind of dank, quiet, dusty, and dark. These things do not like the light, and they're really fast. Look at this thing go. These things move very, very fast, about the same speed as a scalopendra. And they're all a little freaked. Cockroaches. Dude. There are a whole bunch of nooks and crannies like this, everywhere. Up until now, there's no scolopendra. And I'm a little nervous that in a place like this, they're gonna be very, very hard to find. And I'm gonna spend as much time as I can looking for it. Deeper into the cave, we find another good sign. Some very vampiros. Oh, vampire bats. Some very low roosting vampire bats. There's a whole vampire bat chamber right here. Wow, that thing flew right past my face. Oh, wow. It's about 200 or so bats above my head. And the smell of ammonia is quite choking. Vampire bats feed exclusively on blood. So that is blood poo. Bats everywhere. And if the myths are true, then where there are bats, there should be Scalpendra. Coming out, it's coming out, it's coming out. 
coming out. It's coming out. Look at the size of that thing. Look at the size of that thing. But incredibly, this cave has an even greater surprise in store for us. all the way to Venezuela to see. And to be honest, I wasn't sure if I was gonna see it. Judging from the state of this bat, it looks like a fresh kill. We may have missed the attack by mere seconds. You can see these massive mandibles digging into this poor little bat. These guys really are incredible killers. I'm trying to work out where it got this bat from whether it grabbed it from above. Look at it digging in. I mean, half of its head is inside this bat right now. So what the centipede does is envenomate the bat, which will kill it. And then these modified legs that are like jaws just suck up the remains of the bat. But something like this, this size, if it were to wheel around and hit me with this, Mandibles will be an incredibly painful bite. You do not want to get hit by something like this. I think I've pushed my luck enough, and I'm going to leave her in peace let her finish her dinner. What an incredible experience. Seeing a scolopendra feeding on a bat in a cave in the middle of Venezuela. See you later. So concludes a truly once-in-a-lifetime experience in Venezuela. That cave was incredible. It was just teeming with life. And I managed to see a centipede feeding on a bat, which proves that these animals are capable and strong enough of bringing down something that large. What a privilege to be that close up to something like that. Amazing. And it's interesting that in looking for the centipede, I managed to find myself in the company of cockroaches, vampire bats, tarantulas, and rattlesnakes. I guess badasses like to hang out with other badasses.